Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today I'm doing a quick overview and unboxing of the ASUS H110 D3 Micro ATX motherboard. Why should you watch this video? Why should you consider this motherboard? There are two groups of people who should consider this motherboard. Very simply, either A, you're upgrading an older system because you want a modern platform, a modern processor, you want to breathe new life into an older computer, or you're building a new machine and you are wanting as much performance as you can get for a very reasonable price. This motherboard gets overlooked a lot of times by people who are building or upgrading machines. They, they think, well, maybe I should just buy the best. I should buy the top of the line board with all the expensive features. That would be the H170 or the Z170 boards. This is the entry level board at H110. What a lot of people don't realize is this is actually very full featured in its own right and you may not need to spend the money on those boards. H110 motherboards generally cost about $50. Now, there are many brands besides Zeus. I'm actually going to be doing another video later on with a Gigabyte board I happen to have which is also an H110 but this motherboard is an Zeus. A link to this motherboard will be in the description below this video in the video description that will take you to Amazon where you can see this motherboard. I highly recommend it. Azus has really good BIOS, really good supports. Uh, they are one of the largest motherboard manufacturers in the world and I've used them for years. They're really, really good. Now, the processors you see on the desk, which I'm not going to talk in detail about, these are the CPUs I would recommend using into this board. In order from least expensive to most expensive, this is a Pentium G4400, two cores, 3.2 gigahertz. This is the entry level processor for $65. $65 plus $50 is a very reasonable price to get new performance. If you've got a four, five, six year old computer, this will in most cases be noticeably faster than what you currently have. Putting that aside, this is the Intel i3-6100. It's sort of the middle option between these. Two cores, but four threads. So it's faster than the two core chip, but not as fast as the four core. Two cores, four threads, 3.7 gigahertz, $120. Just not quite twice the price of that. 120 plus 50 is $170. This is actually my recommendation for an awful lot of people. It's tons of great performance, very fast chip, good onboard graphics, very inexpensive upgrade. The next chip is the Intel i5-6500. This is a four core, four thread chip. This has four true brains in it. This has, each of these have two. This simulates four, but these have two, this has four. If you are on the more enthusiast end of things, if you want to play a little bit more advanced games, if you multitask a lot, if you're the kind of person that keeps uh, 15 browser tabs open, you want a little bit faster chip. 3.2 gigahertz, turboing to 3.6. Slightly slower in clock speed than the i3, but because it has twice as many execution units, it is actually faster. Now, I'm pushing those aside because this is not a CP review. This is an overview and unboxing of the motherboard, but I want to talk about what you should put in here. Now, this, is a very full featured board in a very small package. What you've got in here, besides a very small box, is a very nice motherboard. I like this motherboard. What we have got here is, this is what's called a micro ATX board. It's fairly small in size. The benefit is it will fit in virtually any ATX computer case. There are a number of inexpensive cases that you can buy to put this into if you don't already have a case or if you have maybe a pre-built system, maybe you've got a Dell or an HP that's four to six years old, this will almost certainly fit in there and work just fine. So it's really nice. Your CPU goes right here. You've got two memory slots here which support uh, up to 32 gigabytes of memory, which is plenty. You have got your PCI Express slot right here. This is for, uh, an X16, so you can put a, a graphics card in here if you want to play more advanced games, if you want to upgrade your machine to be able to play the latest and greatest uh, uh, 3D games. Um, this here is your power slot to plug into your power supply. They, they all have them. Um, this is your CPU power connector that also goes to your, to your power supply. 
it has got a, a four pin CPU connector rather than an eight. That actually makes it very backwards compatible with older systems. Brand new power supplies are all going to come with eight pin connectors here, but a five year old machine, if you're upgrading it, might only have a four pin connector, so that's actually nice to see. Down here on the bottom, you've got four serial ATA ports. This lets you plug in uh, solid state drives, hard drives, uh, DVD readers, writers, uh, a Blu-ray reader, writer. So you've got plenty there for the type of system this will go into. You've got four there. You've got a USB 3.0 header here. If you get a computer case that's got USB 3 ports on the front, you've got a connector here that you can take the cable from the front of the case and plug them in and those will work. There is also a USB 2 header here. So if you've got a nice case maybe that's got two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports, you've got both of those right here and you can put those right into the front of the case. Uh, what else is here? The sound chip is over here. That's pretty standard. Um, fan headers. Uh, let's talk about fan headers. You've got one, um, two, three, where's the third one? There should be a third one on here. I thought there was three on here. There's only two on here. The chassis fan header, you can get a splitter for this if you need it. Um, there's actually only two, there's only two fan headers on here. I thought there were three, my mistake. Okay, looking at the side, oh, um, audio. This is your uh, multi-channel audio port. Uh, this has got full eight channel um, HD audio support. If you've got microphone and headphone jacks on the front of your case, this plug down here is what you would plug the cable from the front of your case to get microphone and headphone jacks to the front of your, to front of your computer. Turning this to the sign, we have got, for backwards compatibility, we've got two what's called PS2, personal system two ports. Now these are not anything you would find in current hardware, but if you're upgrading a five or six year old machine, if you've got the original core, maybe a Core 2 Duo or a core, the first Core i3 or i5 series from 2009, 2010, you might still be using a PS2 mouse or a PS2 keyboard. That's just the type of connector. It does have those just in case you need them. If, if you don't need them, don't worry about it. Next to it, you've got three video ports. This will support three monitors if you want to connect multiple monitors. You have an HDMI port, you have a VGA port, and then you've got a DVI port. Now the HDMI and DVI are digital, and if you can use those first, use those. Use the VGA last only if you have to, because it's analog, and you want to use the digital ports if you can. The nice thing about the modern Skylake architecture is the integrated graphics are actually quite good now. The i3 and the i5 have Intel HD 530 graphics. The Pentium has HD 510, I believe. If you want to play games, get at least the i3, because the 530 that's included will play games like uh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, it'll play games like World of Tanks, it'll play games like um, League of Legends without any problem. You don't need an add-in graphics card, an expensive fancy graphics card, if you're playing uh, certain types of 3D games. Even some 3D shooters will play just fine on the built-in graphics on these chips. They're quite good. These ports are what you'll use to connect your monitor. And maybe if you want to hook up two monitors, plug one into the HDMI and one into the DVI, you can maybe game on one monitor while you've got web browsing or email or something else up on the other screen. It'll work just fine. Next to that, we've got two USB 3.0 ports. Those are nice. Those are the new really fast 5 gigabit ports external hard drives, USB flash drives, will run very quickly on those ports. Next to that, you have a pair of USB 2 ports. What are you most likely gonna use those for? Your keyboard and mouse. That's what you would plug into USB 2. There's two more next to it, so maybe if you've got a USB printer, uh, that doesn't need three, you can plug in a USB printer, maybe you've got some, uh, a webcam, that works fine there. So that's what you could use those ports for. Above that, you have a gigabit Ethernet connection if, uh, to connect to your uh, uh, router or your uh, hotspot or whatnot. You've got a gigabit Ethernet connection. Next to that, we have three speaker or microphone ports. These are smart ports, so they'll configure based on what you plug into them, but this does have full eight channel high definition audio for multi surround sound systems if you want to plug in a nice fancy sound system. 
That's pretty much it. That's the motherboard. It's fairly straightforward and simple. There's one, two, three, four, five. There are six mounting holes. It'll fit into basically any case that meets the ATX standard. <coughs> excuse me, standard. Um, as far as the cooler that goes on here, I recommend using um, each one of these comes with an Intel stock heatsink and cooler. Because none of these chips can be what's called overclocked, because they're designed to run at one speed and, and the speed they're designed at, I don't think there's any need to spend money on fancy aftermarket coolers. Um, this i5, for example, I've got this in one of my personal machines at home. I'm using the fan that's built on here. It runs all day just fine, no trouble. So just use what's in here. It'll plug on the motherboard and be great. As far as what else is in the box, there's not a lot. Let me pull this out, but I will show you. First of all, they provide you with two serial ATA connectors. Uh, these are the cables that will plug in your hard drive, your solid state drive, your DVD drive, etc. So they provide you two of those. And this is very important. This is the IO backplane. If you are upgrading an existing system, you'll have one of these already in your system, or you should. You will need to punch that out, and it just literally snaps in place. Um, take a normal screwdriver, turn it around on the blunt end, and just a few taps should pop it inside the case. It goes inside the case out, not out in. Um, that lines up with the ports on the back of the motherboard, so that's what that's for. And then the last thing we have is a driver CD, which you should not need. In fact, if you're installing Windows 10 on this, it will auto detect everything and you won't need to use this. If you want to install an older version of Windows, you might need to, or if you need to detect the network card, you might have to use that. But if you want to get updated drivers, download them from Azus's website. Azus has really good support on their website. And then you have a manual. Now, the manual is actually really nice. It contains installation instructions. It contains uh, pictures and descriptions on how to put the CPU in, the mounting holes, what RAM is supported, and so on and so forth. It also gives you information on the BIOS, the basic input-output system. That's what first boots in your system before you get to Windows. You don't really need to mess with most of what's in there, but if you want a better understanding of what is in the initial program which runs when your computer starts, this shows you step-by-step -step what's on those pages. And that's it. That's everything in a box. $50 for the motherboard, a selection of three CPUs. RAM, let me mention RAM really quick. I mentioned this at the beginning, I'll mention it again. This is the D3 version of the board. What that means is these two memory slots take DDR3, or double data rate version three memory. There is also a non-D3 version of this board which takes DDR4. If you are upgrading a three to six year old computer, you probably already have DDR3 memory in it. Unless you plan to sell that existing motherboard and CPU with the RAM, you can probably take the memory out of your old motherboard, stick it in here, and it will actually work just fine in 95% of all cases. There's probably a few oddball situations where it won't, but in 95% of cases, your memory from a three to six year old machine will come out of there and go in here just fine. Now, if you are building a new machine, there's an argument to be made to buy the DDR4 version of this board because DDR4 is the future. This will be the last motherboard they make that supports DDR3 memory. It's at the end of its life. Does it matter performance-wise? Not for what you're doing here. Any of these CPUs for what you'd be using this for, it doesn't make any difference. Buy what is less expensive. Um, DDR3 and DDR4 are pretty close in price these days, maybe $10 apart. I will put links to the DDR4 version of this motherboard in the description below, as well as the DDR3, and I'll note DDR3, DDR4. If you're upgrading, you probably want this version. If you're building new, and it's the same basic features, same ports, it's just the type of memory slots. Pick the motherboard that works for you. I will also link to um, a selection of memory, as well as the CPUs in the description. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please leave it in the video description below. Uh, if you have a specific application or concern, um, by all means, I'm, I'm happy to answer your question if I can certainly do so. So what do you think? Did you like this video? Like it. If you don't, well, you know what to do. My subscribe button is right down there. Please click it. I would appreciate it. I will have many more of these videos coming. And if you found this at all useful, if you decide to take a look at any of this stuff, if you end up buying any of this stuff, please do me a favor. Use the links in my video description below. I mentioned that before. They are affiliate links. 
They do pay me a small commission. It's what funds these videos. I was not provided any of this stuff as a free sample. I bought all of this stuff off of Amazon myself. So none of these companies are sending me any of this stuff. I am buying it and your support would certainly be appreciated. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.